<laughs> now, now can I have that drink? Not until you finish your story, Charlie. You have to tell us about General Fremont. Hey, let me see, where was I? Uh, oh, yeah. Hey, well, that was the time that me and the general come through here together. That was in the summer of 47. As a matter of fact, it wouldn't have been no Virginia City if it hadn't been for me and the general. <laughs> I told you to shut up your line, didn't I? I ain't lying. You are lying. I, I, I can't. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, now, wait a minute, mister. <laughs> old Charlie here don't mean any harm. He's just an old man hanging around the saloon. <laughs> We'd like to hear his stories. Well, I don't like to hear them. Now, did anybody ask you to put in your two bits worth? I did scout for General Fremont. I tell you, I did. Why should he be? All right, old man. Let it go. Give me a knife. What you aiming to do? Well, now, anybody that's fought as many Indians as you claim you have ought to have a few scars, shouldn't he? Oh, no. Suppose we just scratch off some of this beard and... Oh. <laughs> So we can. Oh, oh, come on, man. We're just going to carry the cake out of it. People! Charlie don't like to be treated like that. I don't like it neither. Drop something. Yeah. Fremont Expedition. 1847. Presented to Charles Trent, Chief Scout, for our services above and beyond the line of duty. <laughs> Charlie, you, you wouldn't want to lose that. I got in town. All I've seen to do is to cause you trouble. Charlie, you promised me solemn you wasn't going back in that saloon again. Well, I, I didn't mean to. Just them fellas wanted to hear some of my stories, that's all. Yeah, for a couple of drinks. I guess. I guess you won't give me another chance, will you? Dad, Bernie, Charlie, how many chances are you going to have to have? I talked Paul into giving you a job on the ranch, and what do you do? The first payday, you take off, and we don't see you again for a week, and you come back drunk. That was, that was a mistake, Hawk. Charlie, it's that way with every job you got around here. Ain't nobody around here gonna give you a chance now. I, I guess you're right, but I ain't gonna bother you no more. I can promise you that much. Cause I'm, I'm gonna take up scouting again. <laughs> but General Fremont, he'll be sending for me any time now, today, tomorrow for sure. Charlie, I, I wouldn't count on it too much. General Fremont's a busy man. War talk and all. Oh, I know, I know. He, he wouldn't go back on me. You see, him and me, we crossed the Great Salt Flat together. 
I better, better go fix up a little, though, I guess. Charlie, it just ain't no use. I, I done made up my mind what I'm gonna do with you. What? Well, I'm, I'm gonna go in there and get some money, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix you all up nice and clean. I'm gonna put you on the first stagecoach out of here for San Francisco. That's mighty kind of you, boss. I, I appreciate it. But I can't go to no big city. I belong out here. I got to stay here. Charlie, I, I've been all wrong about maybe you getting a new chance here. It's, the big city's the only place for you. I, you stay right here. Don't you go no place here. Horse! Hold on, Cutter. Where are you going? I had a couple of friends of mine was passing through. Thought I'd talk to them, is all. Well, I have a strict schedule on this mission. You'll be back here and ready to lead out in one half hour. <laughs> Hunter? Captain. I think it's about time you and me had us an understanding. Now, I've been loaning it through this territory for a goodly time, and I ain't never taken no orders yet. Not from a savage and not from no soldier boy. You sign an army contract to scout trail. You're going to fulfill it into the letter, or you'll be relieved. Why, mister, you got about as much chance of crossing that desert without me as a blind hootie bat has of reaching the sun. <laughs> All right, carry on, man. Captain. Captain, I know that whole desert. I mapped out the first trail in Salt Lake City. I know the whereabouts of every water hole. Yeah, well, I, I can't sign on anybody just because they claim to be a scout. Uh, you, you, you don't believe me, huh? Here, here, look at that. Look at that. Fremont Expedition. Yeah, and you can read what's written on the other side, too. Presented to Charles Trent, Chief Scout for Services. Trent. Yeah. Are you the same Trent that scouted for the border expedition against the Apaches? Yeah, that was back in, back in 53. I wouldn't have known you. I mean, it's been so long. Of course, you wouldn't remember me. I was just a shave tail, but that was my first assignment. I guess it would have been my last if you hadn't let us out of that Apache trap. Charlie Trent. Uh, you give me a chance, then? Not Charlie. That gold shipment's vital. Maybe with a war coming on, you've got a scout. Perhaps next time I make a trip, Charlie. Captain? That old bum is pretty drunk thinking he can scout for you, sir. Corporal, that old bum was the finest scout in the United States Army. Whatever I know about this territory, I learned from him. Oh. I'm sorry, sir. I am too. Give us a bottle. Give old Buzzard Bait a drink here, too. <laughs> Wake up. The man's buying you a drink. <laughs> Charlie. Oh, oh, oh. Horse, did I ever tell you about the time I led the expedition up the Columbia River? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me, Charlie. Come on, let's go down to the stable and you can clean it off. I tried. I was honest. Honest, I tried hard. You asked some soldier boys if I didn't. That captain, he just didn't want me. Joe, give me a cup of coffee and a sandwich. Captain! You 
ain't making no friends with none of us, Cutter. Where you treating the captain? Ah. I told you to be back and ready in half an hour. Hmm? Seems to me I do remember you saying something like that. Well, don't you mind now. I'll be along a little while. Barkeep! Set my friend the captain here up a drink. Last man that grabbed me like that was the Blackfoot chief. I cut his liver out. A man don't live long without a liver, Captain. That's a pure medical fact. I'm giving you a direct order. Get outside and join the detail. Now. Oh, what? Oh, you're through. Well, now, that don't seem so likely, mister. You need a scout, and I'm the only one there is. You're a long way from being indispensable, Cutter. There's a man knows the wasteland country better than you or any scout alive. Charlie Trent. Trent? <laughs> Where are you going to find him? Charlie? That? Charlie Trent? <laughs> the great Charlie Trent, huh? Remington Massacre. You remember Charlie? He led them soldier boys right into an ambush. Right smack dab up to where them engines was waiting. <laughs> He's just the kind of a scout you need, Captain. <laughs> Collect your gear from the wagon and clear out. Take along plenty of water, soldier boy. Plenty of water. <laughs> Charlie. Charlie, you asked me for a chance. This is it. Now, don't give me any cause to regret it. We'll provide you with your mount and your gear. Get anything else you need. We'll move out as soon as you're ready. Well? Captain. Captain, I... He'll do it, Captain. Uh, Charlie! Captain, my name's Cartwright. I, I'm a friend of old Charlie's. I'll see to it he's ready to go in no time. We rode together. Captain, let him ride with you again. I haven't much choice. Thank you, sir. I'll get him. Charlie. Charlie. I've been looking all over this town. You, the captain's down there waiting for you. You gotta get your gear and... Leave me alone, please, sir. Please leave me alone. Just go... Go tell that captain man you couldn't find me, that's all. Charlie. He's offering you the chance you've been waiting for. If it was just me, I, I wouldn't mind. But you see, it's, it's Pender and all his men depending on me. I... Charlie, you led the first map party across that desert. The first white man that ever crossed it. Now, if you can do that, you can lead Bender and his men now. Uh, or was that just uh, one of your lies about leading that map party? No, because that was true, horse. That was true. All right, then. Now, Charlie, you listen to me, and you listen real good. If you let Captain Pender and those men go out across that desert without somebody to scout the trail for them, you are going to be a coward and a murderer. Charlie, you got to do it. If you... if you help me, if you come with me... Charlie, I... Just like... just like you... just like you said yourself, this year's a chance I've been waiting for. Will you please help me? Will you please come with me? Yes, sir. I'll go with you. Ah, uh, thank you. Oh, I... 
Well, goodbye, Captain, and good luck. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Detail! Forward! Forward! Ha! Ho! <laughs> hey, Charlie. This time, don't go letting them engines get your scalp. <laughs> Stand there laughing like you're just saying something great, Cutter. But all you've done was to mess up things real good. It's working out just the way I want it, Buck. And how do you make that? We had a plan, a plan to get the gold, now we've got nothing. I changed plans for a better one. We still get the gold. Maybe you'd better tell us what you got in mind. The way it works out now, I don't have to explain me surviving. They get lost. Sand covers everything. Ain't a trace of nothing left. And everybody figures it's old Charlie Trent let them raw. You were going to lead them soldiers out into the desert. What if this Charlie takes them another way? Them renegade bands down south would like nothing better than to get their hands on that gold. Cheyenne on the warpath up north, they got nowhere to go but across that desert with us following them. Looking for something, Charlie? Oh, oh, no, no, I wasn't looking for nothing. I just, just looking. A bottle? One bottle. Hey. You ain't gonna find it. Horse. Of course, that was all I had. I, I didn't want to drink it. I, was, I just wanted to know it was here. That's all. I. I wasn't aiming to drink a drop of it. I, I, I promise, it cost my heart. I poured it out this morning, Charlie. I, I can't make it without a drink, horse. Horse, I can't make it. Charlie. You done made it almost a week now, just on a pint. Yeah, what we've come through is nothing. Like taking a walk down a boulevard on a bright, sunshiny day. You wait till we get across that uh, mountain and hit the great salt flats. A man, a man's got to have something in his insides when he tackles that desert. And you done took and poured my insides right out on the ground. Charlie, you're just going to have to grow some new ones. Because if you don't take us across that desert, we're all going to die and rot out there. All right, I'll, I'll try, horse. Honest, I'll, I'll try. Here. You drink your coffee and quit worrying. You're gonna make it. <laughs> My. There they be. Getting ready to bed down like nice soldier boys. Come dark, we're gonna ride. 
From here on out, we stay ahead of them. What's our line of march? Uh, due east, Captain. You see, once you hit that dirt desert, there ain't no landmarks to guide you. You have to kind of, kind of sense things, you know, kind of, kind of feel your way along. Charlie, Charlie, that's what we're depending on you for. To take us to that first waterhole in a two-day march, and then after that, you'll have to lead us to the next waterhole, then on to the last one. Can you do all that, Charlie? I tell you what, I've been, I've been, I've been thinking it over, and I reckon it might be our best bet to head due north. You see, and that way we can circle the desert entirely. You see, with Yellow Star and the whole Cheyenne Nation on the war path. Look, I didn't bring you along to tell me how to get us all killed. We have to cross that desert. Now you signed on as a scout to lead us over it. Now, can you do it? Me and the horse will lead out. Prepare to move. Bring him out! You ever see the Zunis hunt fox? Oh. Well, they just let them keep on running till their tongues are all swole up and hanging out. Then they walk up to them real peaceful like and club them to death. <laughs> yes, sir, we're gonna let those soldier boys just ride on a piece. Far enough so there ain't no way back. like being out on the ocean, ain't it? The only difference is that we're looking for water instead of land. You got your bearing yet, Charlie? You don't, you don't reckon we could have circled back on ourselves, do you, and gotten lost? No, no, no. Ain't much daylight left, Charlie, and you said we'd sure find that water hole before sundown. That there water hole has got to be within an hour's march of here, I'm telling you. You go back and tell the captain. And tell him to bring them soldiers of his up here right away. You sure, Charlie? Sure, no, of course I ain't sure. But I gotta act like I was. I gotta fool them soldiers into thinking, I'm sure. Cause if just one man panics, it'll spread like wildfire. We'll find ourselves a bunch of buzzard bait. You, you said you had faith in me, didn't you? Yes, sir, I do. Well, hang on to it, son. Hang on to it, because that's all I got to hang on to myself. I'll tell him. No, when I find that there water, I'll fire three shots in the air. Yes, sir. Detail! Detail! All oh. move! Captain. Dismount. Yes! How? Captain. Just a little piece further. I made a mistake trusting him. I think it's time we admit it. Both of us were lost. You know it. Captain, you're wrong. With the captain's permission. Me and the men like the captain to tell us straight out how we stand. 
Captain. And you've got a right to know. It's Charlie. He found a water. Yeah, what? What's wrong? That your water's been poisoned. See the animal over there? It was the same thing that'll happen to any of us that drinks this here water. We don't need a scout to find poison water for us. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Move the detail to that area up ahead. Make camp. Issue half rations of water to the men and the mules. None to the mounts. Detail. Forward. All right, Charlie. How far to the next water hole? It's about to say as much. But me or nobody else can say whether that water will be any more fitting to drink than this is. Can you find it? I found this one, didn't I? What do you think, Captain? We can make our water last another full day. We'll have to lose our mounts. The mules can keep going as long as they get some water. You gotta make the decision, Captain. If we turn around and go back, the men in the gold will be saved, but if you go on up ahead and that water is poisoned too, it'll be too late to turn back. There's nothing in my orders about turning back. But Charlie will move out just before dawn while it's still cool. This one too? That's what I'm gonna do, but they'll have to get suspicious. That don't make no difference. Besides, they can't never know just how it got done. Now go on, do like I told you, start brushing out our tracks. Look, all we've been doing is riding around this miserable desert. Now I say we stay here and finish off them soldiers. All I want is to split that gold. And I ain't got nothing so far but sunbaked. Where'd it go? I'll side with them. Now, them soldiers have got to come here. All we got to do is wait for them. But if you feel you'd rather not make the stand with us, you can clear out. No hard feelings. <laughs> no hard feelings, huh? Now, you listen to me. Every last one of you. There ain't one of you got a chance of leaving these salt flats alive less than I lead you. Now, where would you ambush eight men on flatlands like this? But up ahead, there's places where we can pull it off. Now, go on. Do like I told you. Stop brushing out our tracks.
Heisen. Kelly, Kelly, get out of that forest, get out of there. 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 Get out Kelly himself will prove I was right. Are you drunk, an old sot? A billion loaded with so much poison now from liquor, you don't know what you're doing. You tip us away from this water. You don't. Sergeant, bring a canteen. We know he was doing that, Captain. He can't swallow none, no how. Move him over under the wagon, cover him with a blanket. There's four riders and one spare horse. All well, headed away from here, riding fast for the next water hole. And poison that one, too. Another thing, Captain. Only a scout would know his way around here like them bushwhackers are doing. A scout? Might have to be Cutter. Go ahead while we still have some water left and try to fight our way through. Uh, Captain. Captain, there's rocks around that there uh, water hole. Best place in the world for ambush. They'd, they'd pick us off before we ever seen them. We're not gonna stay here and die now without a fight. You got an idea better than that? Yeah. yeah. If they are still at that water hole, that water will be good until after they finish us off. That makes sense, Charlie. Go <laughs> on. Yeah, but we got to make sure they are still there. So when the moon sets, I'll start out, see? I should make it in oh, an hour or two. No, Charlie, no. I'll go with some of my men. Sergeant, you and Johnson will go with me. Corporal? No, Captain. I'm a, I'm a scout. I can do a better job alone. All right, Charlie. But after you get there, what then? Well, if they ain't there and the water is still good, I'll fire three shots. Oh, well, Cutter may have heard that signal before. So this time I'll fire three shots, wait a while, then fire two more. And Captain, when you hear them five shots, you come a running. And if I don't hear the five shots, if you don't hear them, you head due north. Four smarts, traveling by night. Now, with any luck, you ought to make the highlands and water in about two days. Of course, the uh, <laughs> Cheyennes might be there, too. But then maybe, <laughs> maybe it's better to be scalped than to die of thirst, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry I ever doubted you, Charlie. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Captain. Thank you. My horse. Charlie, when I promised to come along this deal, I'm in all the way. No, no, you've done enough for me already. I just ain't worth it. Can't you understand that? If you leave me here, I'll, I'll just tag along after you. Horse, you ain't coming with me. Besides, I, I travel faster alone. Charlie. If I let you go out there alone, I'd feel guilty the rest of my life. That's better than being dead, ain't it? You know better than that. Yeah. Five shots, right, Captain? I don't like it. It just, it just don't feel good. We're gonna have to take a chance on it anyhow. Let's go. 
All right, but you be careful, son. Charlie's gonna take you all day to make up your mind. long talk about my good friend Captain Pender. <clears throat> Why don't them soldier boys come with you? How many of them are there left? I reckon that's something you're gonna have to find out, mister. Well, that's something I'm just gonna find out. Cut up! Hey, the back of the other water hole. Charlie. There's, there's five of them. One of them died. They're waiting for my signal to come on ahead. Charlie! Captain Pender got any suspicion of me? No, of course not. <laughs> no, if, if we had any suspicions, you don't suppose that me and the horse would have come walking in here the way we done, do you? No, I reckon not, being the scout you once was. What's that signal? I ain't gonna tell you. You ain't gonna tell me. <laughs> hey, let it go. Fetch me my saddlebag. You ain't gonna tell me. Charlie? This ought to make you talk, huh? <laughs> It's all yours, Charlie. You just tell me what that signal is. <laughs> My, I bet you got mighty dry for this, too. Mmm. Smell it, Charlie, huh? What's the signal now, huh? Don't you tell him, Charlie. Mmm. <laughs> That's too good to waste on you. But... <laughs> Tastes good, huh? Yeah. What's the signal, Charlie? And it's all yours, every last bit of it. Signal three. Three. Louder, three Charlie. Louder. Three shots. Charlie. Charlie. Three uh, shots. The signal is three shots. And when, when Pender hears them, they'll move out and join us here. Three shots, just like before. But I want to make sure. Yeah, just like before, huh? Yeah, uh, that's right. <laughs> hey, Buck, untie him. What about him? Uh, untie him. He ain't going no place. Now, now, <laughs> give it to me. Here's your reward, Charlie. <laughs> is, it, is it all right, Oss? Yeah. I reckon you earned that one, Charlie. <laughs> this ought to bring him running like a flock of dumb sheep. Three. Go on, Charlie. Just fire two more times. Five shots, he said. He's trying to warn us. They ran into trouble. <laughs> we, we sure fooled him that time, didn't we, huh? <laughs> oh, the Carter thought he was tormenting me into telling the truth. 
And all the time, it was Carter himself that gave the signal for Panda to start moving north. <laughs> yep. They're going to find out in a minute. When they do, they'll have to be real mean, Charlie. Yeah, well, I... I you know, you know, it's a funny thing. I got plenty of this doggone stuff. I don't seem to want it. <laughs> you know, it kind of, uh, kind of burns me inside. Hey, Cutter! Cutter. Look! Here they come! Three soldier boys. Only three. Ain't none of them tender. He's a smart one. Maybe he figures I'm going behind this butte and having himself a look-see. Hey, Latigo, you get up among them rocks. Keep your eyes peeled. You let me know, but don't you do no shooting, you hear? Well, I, I guess the only reason I drink the doggone stuff is so that I can stop remembering. I just don't understand it. That wasn't a signal for them to come up here. You see, Horace, years ago, I led a whole detachment of cavalry into a Kiowa trap. It was all butchered and they died cursing me. Wasn't your fault, Charlie. Yeah, that ain't good enough. Look, you keep watching that wagon. Morgan, you take those two and you keep them out of sight. I may need the old man later to weigh these on. You get over behind those rocks. And don't try to let her know we're here. I'll break this gun barrel right over your heads. Stay low. No time at all now. We're going to be divvying up that gold. He must have spotted the others. Now, you stay here, Buck. No shooting until I start it. You be mighty careful how you go hitting them mules. Two of them coming from high up behind us. One of them's the captain. Well, that makes it easier for us. We'll just let them sneak up on us before we start shooting. Come on. We gotta do something, Hoss. We gotta shut up. Oh, man. Don't be so hoggy with that whiskey. Fill that cup. Sure. Bring it over here. Careful. Good work, Charlie. You go get Buck. I'm going after Cutter. Bye. And if they're down there, and not giving it away. Let's get down to those four big rocks down there, see him? Yeah. I'll go first. Doggone it, I had him dead to right. We got him pinned down now, we can blast him out of there easy.
Hey, the water, the water is good, Captain. You can drink it. That's nah, just a crease, Charlie. Hey, Corporal! Corporal! Bring up the wagon. Get yourselves a drink. Detail that pen. Scout, lead us out. Sure, Captain. Detail. Man, Bob, that's Adam Cartwright. Come on, let's get out of here. Who are you? A friend. You're a feather-footed one. Who are you? Gerald Esketh by name. Here. Perhaps this will relieve your mind. U.S. Deputy Marshal. I can't say I'm sorry to see you. Who are they? The Clevenger brothers. Friends of yours? Hardly that. But you may have made a terrible mistake. Just be thankful that you're still alive. And I'll be thankful that I've reached the end of a long trail. The Clevengers were wanted in California for bank robbery. I had the uh, unpleasant duty of killing their older brother. He was caught robbing sluice boxes. Oh, so you were the one. I was only performing my official duty. tells me we're greatly in your debt. Well, I'm happy that I was fortunate enough to be in the right place at the right time. We'll try to make your stay here a very comfortable one. Please. Thank you. We appreciate a great deal what you did for Adam, Mr. For all of us. Adam? Anything else you want to tell me? Oh, I still can't believe it, Pa. 
I mean, I'm not selling the Clevenger short. The roughest bunch of renegades I've ever known, but I just can't imagine them taking a shot at me. Now, you never know with that bunch. Old Git Clevenger and his boys have made their own laws for so long, you never know when they might step over the line. And you did have the ranch payroll with you. They must have thought it was somebody else. Now, believe me, Adam, I know how you feel, but the marshal did have a warrant for them. Well, there's one thing for certain, he isn't too upset about it. Now, come on, we've got a guest to take care of. We'll decide later what to tell Git Clevenger. If he gives us a chance to talk. Hmm. The bucolic life is not for Gerald Eskin. Why well, put Mr. Eskin's bag in the upstairs room? Thanks, son. Well, one would scarcely expect to encounter the Epe out here in the wilderness. Well, little Joe's mother was Louisiana French. He likes to play around with them. You mean you actually use this? Oh, I fool around with it just for fun. He's faster than Grease Lightning, Mr. Eskin. Come on, Joe, let's show him. On guard, brother. You should never have given those two a chance to show off. You know, they really have no intention of killing each other. He has an admirable skill. Whack him over the head, horse. You'll never get anywhere poking at him. <laughs> you say? Nevertheless, your technique is not quite flawless. When you faint to the left, you're a bit off balance. On guard? On guard. somebody with that. You lost the button off the point. So I did. This might have been fatal. Violence as such is vulgar. Any man who in anger takes a human life becomes a brother of the apes. He's an aesthetically impoverished man. Don't you think so? Oh, yes, sir. I reckon. And yet the skills and rhythms of disciplined violence have beauty. Like a painting by Rubens or Botticelli, unfettered by personal emotion. Yes. There, to that simple word, can be traced the downfall of most artists and many human creatures. Emotion. You know, that's a, that's a very interesting observation, Mr. Eskett. I don't think I could cast you in the mold of an average lawman. <laughs> I've been told that. Well, I think the elegance and hospitality of your home have made me forget my original mission. I'm here to visit an old friend. Would you happen to know a Mr. Jason Blaine? Oh, do you say it? Yes. Oh, yes, know him, know him very well. And his wife. Wife? Jason married? Oh, yes, about a year. They were married right in this very room. Then you do know him well. Well, uh, Jason has always been a little hard to know, but... Uh... Mariette is practically a part of our family. Mariette? What a charming name. Yes, uh, her father was a very dear friend of mine. When he died, he left the raising of Mariette almost entirely to my supervision. Jason Blaine married. How very, very interesting. Is she a pretty girl? Well, we always thought so, but of course we could be slightly prejudiced. Oh, no, my dear Adam. I have a feeling I can trust your judgment in such matters. Awesome. Time to eat, please. Oh, good. Could I uh, freshen up a bit before supper? Oh, of course. I'll show you to your room. Adam, what are you staring at? 
Oh, I didn't realize I was. Look, I know you feel bad about the Clevengers, but it's like Esketh told Hoss and me. Bob and Bill had a bead right on your back. He had to shoot fast in any way he could. You gotta just be thankful he was there. Yeah, I'll try to remember that. Come on, let's have some supper. Right. And so, under the circumstances, there was little I could do. And that, gentlemen, is the way I shot my first tiger in India. Oh! Hey. Oh, for heaven's sakes, number one, because can't you do anything right? Here, let me do that. Mr. Cartwright, take you long time to know San Francisco. Take me long time to know Pantalosa. I help you in San Francisco, you help me in Pantalosa. All right? All right. Thank you. <laughs> You know, for years we had the most wonderful cook, Hop Singh. So he went back to Hong Kong and talked me into hiring his number one cousin. I don't know. <laughs> number one cousin? Doesn't he have a name? Well, if he's got one, he hasn't told us about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about this, Gerald. Think nothing of it. The same thing happened when I was dining with the Prince of Wales in Paris. Get go, Mr. Esketh. You ain't been just about every place. And there's one place I never cease to enjoy going to. Where's that? Beds. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a long ride, and I'm afraid I'm not much of a night owl. Joe, this has been an extremely pleasant evening. Extremely pleasant. I'm sorry about what happened at the end of it. Uh, Hoss and Joe, see that Mr. Eskett has everything he needs? Yes, sir. Uh, tomorrow morning, Adam and I will ride into Virginia City with you. We'll show you where Jason and Marianne live. Fine, fine. Have a good rest. Adam, I regret the circumstances under which we met, but I'm grateful that we, we did meet. A stranger in a strange community. It's heartening to have substantial friends. Good night. Good night. Mr. Eskett, did you sure enough have that old tiger cat for the tail? Sure enough. <laughs> that house makes the most wonderful audience, doesn't it? <laughs> I hope you'll go along with my little whimsy and wanting to surprise Jason. We were such close friends, and it's been such a long time since I've seen him. Are you sure you can find the house? My dear Adam, your directions are most explicit. Uh, don't forget, we want you to spend at least a few days with us at the ranch house. I know Adam and the boys will want to take you on that cougar hunt. Ben, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your hospitality. And as I told you before, there's nothing in life I find as exciting as a hunt. Thank you again, both of you. Adam, when you get through with the bank, meet me at the hotel. We'll have a bite to eat. Right. Pardon me, dear lady, if I startled you. But I had wrongly assumed that no one was home and had started to leave. I'm glad that I was in error. You're Mrs. Blaine? Yes, I am. The Cartwrights told me all about you. Are you a friend of the Cartwrights? And an old and dear friend of your good husband. Gerald Esketh is my name. Surely, Jason has mentioned me. No, I don't recall... Well, that is, I've never met any of Jason's friends. Did you meet him in California? I did indeed. My dear child, Jason's mineralogy has surely been worthwhile. He's found a true jewel. I don't know if you're making fun of me or not, but Jason is not at home. Then perhaps you wouldn't mind if I waited a while for him. Ben and Adam have some business to transact in town, and I'm a total stranger here. Oh, yes, of course. How rude of me. Won't you come in, Mr. Eskith? Thank you. Oh, won't you sit down, Mr. Eskith? Thank you. I'll make you some tea. How very thoughtful of you. What a fine likeness of Jason. Yes, it is, isn't it? Jason, good morning. How are you, Adam? Fine. Did your friend find you? Oh, who's that? Your friend from California, Gerald Eskett. No. Is there anything wrong? Uh, no, everything's all right. Eskett, uh, is he here in town? 
Well, he stopped over at our ranch last night and he rode into town this morning with us. Went to your house, he wanted to surprise you. Thank, thank you, Adam. You have some very interesting things, Marianne. I couldn't help but notice this jewel box. Oh, Jason took that for a saying some ore. <laughs> I'm afraid he isn't very practical. But he is sweet. We've been so happy here. I'm sure you have. We thought most highly of Jason in San Francisco. Oh, how elegant these must look on you. Oh, well, they're not real pearls. But your beauty would make them appear priceless. Please, may I see them on you? There you are. Look who's here. My dear Jason, after all of these years. Ask it. They're reviving the old case in Sacramento, Jason. And they couldn't very well proceed without the chief prosecution witness, you. Is this something you two gentlemen would rather discuss privately? No, no, not at all. My business as a law enforcement officer is public business, and I'm sure that you and your husband have no secrets from each other. I'll fix you some tea, Jason. Have you told her of this matter? No. How could I? She's almost part of the Cartwright family. How much have you told her? Nothing. I detest emotional display. What's the matter, Jason? Nothing, Marriott. Nothing you'd understand. You're not aware of all the facts, Marriott. He has a right to be a reluctant witness. His testimony will be against the most sinister forces in Northern California. They may seek retaliation. Retaliation? However, he'll be in my protective custody. Jason, I trust you to be ready for the journey, shall we say, at noon tomorrow? Does that allow you enough time? You trust me? I amend that. I trust your wife to see that you're ready. Thank you for the tea, Maria. It was indeed a pleasure meeting you. I should never have tried to run away from it. Jason, what do you mean? I loved you so much. I thought I had a right to a little happiness. But you did have, and you still have. I won't let you go back. We can leave, and we can make another start. Don't you see that that's what I tried to do, and this is the result of it? Nothing will change. I've got to go back with him. But he said that it would be dangerous. I don't intend to lose you, Jason. I love you much too much. Huh? Oh, have you seen Eskith? Uh, he's probably still with Jason. Did you get that matter straightened out at the bank? Oh, yeah. Good. But uh, as I was leaving, I ran into Jason, and I told him that uh, Esketh was looking for him, and he uh, he seemed very upset about it. Huh? I think Esketh is here as a friend to see Jason, or uh, is he here in an official capacity? Well, I don't know. Esketh is a United States Deputy Marshal. Of course, what do we really know about Jason? Came in here, swept Marriott off her feet. Of course, it's done very well here. He's been here. He's been very good to her. I suppose that's all you could ask of any man. Yeah, well, I'd feel better if I had a talk with Marriott and Jason. Just ask them if there was anything wrong. What do you think? I think it's a good idea. And also remind Marriott that we still have family for as long as she needs us. Look, while you're over there, I'll go see Judge Rand. Go 
going someplace, my dear Jason? I was young, Esketh. It was over five years ago. Time gets away from a man, doesn't it? I'm curious, Jason. Why didn't you go back to Ohio? My arm isn't quite that long. You know I'm a mineralogist. Yes. I traced you through Arizona, Idaho, and all over the Comstock load. You changed your name a couple of times, but I found you. Well, you can't take me out of Nevada territory. Here are the extradition papers. I trust, Jason, you're growing tired of trying to run away. Everything legal and above board, huh, Esket? Always. Which reminds me, I must present my credentials to your local judge. I had a little official business on the way in. Billy and Bob Clevenger. You saw the Clevengers? Briefly, through my sights. They're both dead. What about Gideon, the old man? Always a good friend to you, wasn't he, Jason? No, I haven't seen him yet, but I'll plan to see him before he sees me. You, um... Seem to have built up a nice little business here. Oh, why don't you get it over with? Why don't you kill me and have done with it? No, Jason. I'll kill you because that's what I came here for. But I'll pick my own time and my own place. And besides, I intend to get much better acquainted with your wife. She's lovely, Jason, completely lovely. What's the matter? Is there something wrong? Oh, no, nothing. It's just that I haven't seen you for so long. Where's Jason? Oh, he went to the office to uh, pick up some things. Mariette, you're just about as close to being a sister as I'll ever have. Now, a big part of that pleasure is being able to help you. Tell me, what happened when Gerald Esketh came here? Oh, nothing happened. I think Mr. Esketh is a very charming person. We, uh, we even had tea. Oh, Adam, I just can't lie to you. I've tried, but I just can't. That's more like it. Now, tell me about it. <laughs> Jason has to go to California to be a witness in a trial. Well, that doesn't sound so terrible. I know, but the men that he has to testify against, they threaten to kill him. You see, that's why Jason left California. I see. Did he talk to Judge Rand about this? Oh, that was my first suggestion, but Jason didn't think it would do any good. Well, Jason's upset. I think I'm in a better position to decide than he is. So why don't you and I have a talk with Judge Rand? I think we'll find it. Jason can make a legal deposition right here in Virginia City. Oh, Adam, could we do something like that? Well, we won't know until we ask, will we? Come on, get your hat. All right. I'm sure when we know all the facts. Adam. My dear Mariette. What a pleasant surprise this is. Forgive me, Your Honor. I am United States Deputy Marshal Gerald Esker. You're in my federal district, Marshal. If you have business here, you should have presented your documents to me. I fully intended to do so, sir. As a matter of fact, I was on my way to your chambers when your uh, messenger intercepted me. Mrs. Blaine states that her husband's life will be in danger if he, if he gives certain testimony in Sacramento. To some extent, she may be right. I myself will not feel too secure as his pledged bodyguard. Now, you will note there, sir, that this is the state versus Hadley Murdoch and a number of John Doe's, all of whom comprise a political machine known as the Murdoch Gang. Now, these are infamous men, sir, grown fat on terrorism and plunder, and so rich and powerful indeed 
that they now have most of the state of California under their rule of dread and fear. Blaine is the key witness? We, on the side of the law, earnestly believe that Jason Blaine is the one man who can send these culprits to the gallows. Well, your husband's duty is clear, Mariette. And we can't very well call out the militia to guard him. Well, I was planning a trip to Sacramento in a week or so. I could change my plans, go along with you. It would make Mariette feel better. Oh, it would, Adam, it would. Anything to relieve this dear lady's anxieties. And rest assured, we'll be joined by other officers in Sacramento. Oh, I'm very grateful to you, to all of you. Uh, Mr. Esketh, I'm terribly sorry to have caused you all this trouble. There's no trouble, my dear. On the contrary, I was delighted to see revealed that jewel which money cannot buy. Loyalty. Marshal, you and Adam both, I, I'd like to talk to you. If it's, uh, if it's all right with you, Mariette. Of course not. Adam, Jason will be so pleased to know that you're going with him. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. It's about the killing of the Clevenger brothers. Ah, yes. A distasteful duty, I assure you. But there is a warrant out in California for their arrest. I was talking to your father, Adam. He was telling me that Gideon Clevenger came to see him. Yeah, but he didn't seem to want to make any trouble. Strange man, Gideon Clevenger. He'll brood about the death of his sons. And then he'll decide to take the law into his own hands. He can be very dangerous if he makes up his mind to it. Well, the thought of any further bloodshed is completely repelling to me. I'll rest a whole lot easier when you're out of town, on your way back to Sacramento. Then you think that this um, Gideon Clevenger will make the death of his two sons a personal issue between himself and me? I think that precisely. I see. Jason, I have the most wonderful news. I've just come from talking to Judge Rand. You what? Oh, it's all right, darling. He's going to write a letter to a friend in Sacramento, a judge. And then Adam is going to go with you. No, no, he can't do that. But Jason, Adam only wants to help. Well, he, well, he can't go with me. But why? Tell me why. Because if Adam Cartwright goes with me, he'll never get there alive. Jason, what are you trying to tell me? Can't we make one move in our life without the Cartwrights getting mixed up in it? But the Cartwrights are my best friends and they're the best friends you ever had. I don't want to talk about it. Jason, now come on, this isn't like us. I'm your wife and I have a right to know the truth. Well, I have told you the truth. Tell me something. Why did you say that if Adam went with you, he would be killed? Because that is the truth too. Jason, I have never asked you anything about your past life before because it just wasn't important. But now it is. Now, do they want you as a witness for something you saw or for something you did? What difference does it make? Eskis told you about the Murdoch gang, didn't he? Yes. Well, that gang isn't going to let me get to Sacramento alive. Not even with Mr. Esketh and Adam to protect you? Don't you realize that Esketh was sent here to kill me? Once I leave here, I'll be dead before I can get as far as the Ponderosa. But why would anybody want to kill you? Because that's why he came here. He is a hired, paid killer. Now try to understand that. Jason, there must be something we can do. There must be. What? You want me to get a gun? Go up against him? <laughs> he would love that. Self-defense, everything above board, legal. Then why don't you go to Judge Rand? Tell him the truth and he'll protect you. You saw his papers. He is a marshal. He has every right in the world to take me in. And you're going to stand there and let him do it. Well, what else can I do? We can go away. We can go east. Jason, please, please, they can't reach that far. Even if we have to spend the rest of our lives hiding, I don't care. I'd much rather have you that way than not have you at all. Please. If we only could. If we only could. 
it would be like starting from the beginning. No West, no past tense. Jason, we must do it. We must. We can. I know we can. You get some things packed. There's still less. Get... Don't forget, I tried this once before. Oh, but don't forget, you didn't have me before. Now, I can handle him. I think I know a ladies' man when I see one. Yes, I know how to deal with him. No, I can't let you do that. He's too dangerous. Oh, no, darling. Really, he won't be with me. Please trust me. Trust me. Now, hurry. Hurry and get something packed, please. Adam, I find this a land of unexpected pleasures. Little did I dream that you'd be making the trip to Sacramento with me. Well, since I am, don't you think it uh, might be a good idea to let me in on the truth? Well, isn't that a rather strange way to put a question, Adam? Well, as Paul and I both told you, we think a great deal of Mariette. And so do I think a lot of her. That's why I tried to spare her the seriousness of Jason's case. Then he's not just a missing witness. No. A missing criminal. But on your honor, Adam, this is to go no further in Virginia City. By turning state's evidence, he'll be able to return here with no damage to his so-called reputation. Well, I appreciate whatever protection you can give Mariette. You know, I believe we think alike. I even had him listed in the documents as a witness, not as one of the accused. Thank you for telling me. Well, I'd like to get the best lawyer you can find. Adam, I don't want you to think it rude of me. But under the circumstances, I think it best not to return to the Ponderosa. I'll take a room here at the hotel, and if it's convenient for you, we'll leave, shall we say, first thing in the morning? Fine with me. I'll bring your luggage in with me. And bring along your best suit, Adam. I know some pretty girls in Sacramento, and perhaps we can forget some of the more unpleasant aspects of a marshal's duties. Very good. If I uh, seem a little cool towards you, it's... It was only because of my concern for Mariette. Well, I better let Pa know what's happened. See you in the morning. seen you for some time. Save your words, Judge. I know Gerald Esketh's in this town. Now, where is he? I really don't know, Gideon. Look at me when I talk to you. I don't like fellas who can't look straight. You've lost three sons trying to fight a private war. Why don't you just find yourself a rocking chair and live to a ripe old age, huh? I've got a better idea that'll help a lot more people. You deliver Esketh to me, I'll get out of Virginia City and stay out. You don't? I got 20 more men anxious to ride in here. You're not serious. I have offered you a fair deal. Get me that back shooter. Come in. Oh, my dear Adam. They tell me Gideon Clevenger's looking for me. He's threatening to tear the whole town apart unless you're handed over to him. He seems a truly dedicated scoundrel. Faithful to his purpose, honest to a fault. I want you to know that Pa and I'll be backing you up. Thank you kindly, Adam. Look into the matter? Well, you're certainly a cool one. I'll have to admit that. What are you gonna do? Make our friend a sporting proposition? He's in the saloon? Clevenger! 
Can you hear me? I can hear you, Esketh. It's a voice I'm not likely to forget. You made this personal, Clevenger, so let's keep it that way. There's no sense in harming innocent people. You've made yourself a deal. But if the Cartwrights or anyone else tries to get into it, I'm cutting my boys loose. You're free to change your mind any time. Thank you, friend, but I find the arrangement most satisfactory. I've already planned my strategy. I don't like this, Adam. I'm beginning to think Esketh knows what he's doing. Make your play, you filthy little back shooter. You first, my dear Clevenger. Finish the job, Esketh. Had to be better get the doctor, see what we can do with Clevenger. How is Clevenger? He'll pull through. He wants to see you. I took the liberty of dropping in without knocking. Well, I was sure the door was locked. You grow lovelier each time I see you. I must look aside. A sight indeed. The very kind and inspired Wordsworth to rhapsodize. She was a phantom of delight when first she gleamed upon my sight. <laughs> now you know that you much prefer those sophisticated San Francisco women to a country girl like myself. I hope someday to prove the error of that statement by putting you beside them. A ruby in a diadem of glass. Oh, you mean the ones from the Barbary Coast? What lies has Jason been telling you about me? Oh, why, none, none. It's just that I know so little about San Francisco. It was only a chance remark. And please accept my apology. I'm thin-skinned when it comes to matters of honor. Oh, I apologize, too. I had planned to look much more presentable the next time we met. Then it was rude of me to arrive so unexpectedly. But I thought I'd better tell you that Judge Rand suggested that I start back to Sacramento immediately. Oh, so soon. You don't know how lonely it gets. I mean, Jason has to work such long hours. I've never met anyone like you, Gerald. A little more time won't matter. Could you come to the hotel to let me know when Jason is ready? Just as long as you aren't too impatient. Now, let us not misunderstand my honorable intentions. I understand your intentions perfectly.
You're gonna learn just who you've been playing games with. Who? What are you? He's Murdoch's hatchet man. Around the Embarcadero, they call him the Dude Butcher Boy. It's my reckoning he came here to lead Jason Blaine to the slaughter because Jason knows too much. Jason was mixed up with Murdoch? He was a spotter for the bunch. That's easy for an essayer. Whenever he'd see gold bullion, he'd tell Esketh. That slimy killer would lead his night riders, claiming they were vigilantes. That was a good cover for him. But Jason got second. He quit and ran away. Jason was too soft for Esketh's shooting parties. I saw him later in Virginia City. But I figured let a feller go straight that's trying hard. And your oldest son? Esketh backshot my boy at our California stamp mill while his outfit looted. The other two, you know about Ben. They wasn't killers. They heard Esketh was headed this way. They mistook Adam for him. That fool Jason. Why couldn't he tell us the trouble he was in? There's a thing called reputation, Ben. Especially if you're married to a woman like Mariette. I'd swear she never knew that Jason had a record. No! Don't! Sorry, honey, it's me, it's Adam. Oh, Adam. Where's Jason? Was Esketh here? Yes. He hit me. And he slapped me. And he wanted me to tell. Did he tell you who he really is? Yes. And he said terrible things about Jason. Where is Jason? Where is he? Where is he? The, uh, silver Corazon mine. I'm supposed to meet him there. He gave me a little trail map. He took it. It's gone. He took it. He took the map. Oh, He'll kill come, Jason. Come, come, come down. Come. Now listen, I'll send somebody to look after you. Now don't go away, you stay right here. Okay. Jason? Jason! You can't get away, Jason. Can you hear me? Would you like to hear what happened to your wife? She died in my arms, Jason. I held her. I watched her. Can you take that and run away with it?
the unruly emotions, Jason. But don't be ashamed because they've destroyed you. They've conquered more men than Napoleon's armies. Go ahead. Go ahead and shoot. The sound will bring right to you. I'm here! Is it just the uncomfortable circumstances I find myself in? No. It might have worked on Clevenger, but it won't work on me. My dear Adam, you don't think that I'd be childish, so childish as to pull the same chestnut twice. <laughs> Gerald Eskew would be defeated by emotions. I can't believe you ever had any. Oh, yes. I did. I was in love, you know. I was in love with Gerald Eskew. We'll miss you very much. Thank you, Ben. Thank you for everything. Judge Rand said it shouldn't be more than a year. And that will be the longest year of my life. Well, I'm glad you made the decision on your own, Jason. When you come back, your house will be here waiting. Thank you, Ben. Goodbye. We'll be waiting, too. Things will be just the same. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, that's what I call a real fine-looking woman. Yeah, you mind your manners, because she's a married woman. Hey, Miss Edwards, this is a real pleasure, ma'am. Hello, horse. Hello, little Joe. My pleasure, ma'am. Uh, little Joe, why don't you see after Miss Edwards' horse while I help her down? Yeah, well, little brother, why don't you see after her horse while I help her down? Hey. 
Joyce. Ben. Oh. Oh, Ben. Oh, it's so good to see you again. It's wonderful seeing you. Uh, you'll stay for supper. Uh, oh. Adam, you remember Mrs. Edwards? Oh. Hello, Adam. I remember her. I just wasn't speaking because I was so busy looking. You can't right, certainly know how to please a woman. Uh, Joe, run until Hop Singh will have a guest for supper. Right, Bob. Oh, uh, Adam, I... Adam, uh, down in the cellar by the north wall are two cases of Lafitte. Bring up a couple yes, of bottles. Yes, sir. Really, I... Now, look, you've come all this way. Surely you can stay for a little while. Now, we need a lady in this house. You know, I've got these three grown sons, and somebody has to teach them manners. Now, please, come here. All right. But just for a little while. <laughs> I wouldn't go in there if I was you, Miss Edward. It's nothing, Ben. He's just our new hired hand. He must be lost. Pay no attention to him. Suit yourself, ma'am. Only Mr. Edwards ain't gonna like this. Ezekiel, you can tell Mr. Edwards anything you want to. But Mr. Cartwright is an old friend, and I'm going inside. Anything you say, ma'am. But I'll be waiting for you. attractive, Ben. It gets nicer with the years. It's been years since you've been in this house, Joyce. Yes, I know. I've missed seeing it. I've missed seeing you. All of us have. How's Tom? Oh, all right. Just all right? How is he, really? He's still bitter. He's been bitter ever since the accident. All day long, he just follows me around in his wheelchair. And every night, in front of Ezekiel, he, he calls me names. He, he says the most awful things. Ezekiel, the, the man outside, the hired hand? Oh, he's more than just that. Tom spends half the night drinking and gambling with his hired hand. Drinking and gambling? I thought the accident left him incapacitated. Only from the waist down. Tom drinks himself into a stupor, and Ezekiel carries him upstairs. He never knocks. He just brings him right into the room. And he puts him down on the bed next to me. Then he straightens up. And he looks at me lying there. And he says, Good night, Mrs. Edwards. And goes. Every night it's this. But last night. Usually Tom can't turn over, but somehow last night he managed to. I woke up and I saw him bending over me with a carving knife in his hand. He didn't move. He just, he just sort of smiled at me. You're so beautiful, he said. I can't bear to think of my going first. Joyce, surely you must know Tom meant no harm. I don't know. He's always talking about death, his death, my death. I, uh, I've got to go. Joyce, please, stay. I can't, Ben. I... Oh, Tom will be all right. If only he could find something to do to take his mind off himself. He... Oh, I... 
I've got to go. Well, Hoss, uh, would you get Mrs. Edward to us, please? Right, Paul. Joyce. I don't like the idea of his following you. Oh, it's all right, Ben. He'll keep his distance. I'll ride along partway with you. All right. Thank you. Here you are, Miss Edward. Oh, thank you, boss. Once it was Pa's gun that hit him. Well, that's a lie. Eat your supper, both of you, and stop talking about it. Well, look, I didn't mean he hit him on purpose. I meant he hit him accidental. Well, that's two lies. Well, that's not what they say in town. Well, that's Mr. Edwards, Joe. Sure, he blames Pa. He claims he crippled him. Well, did he or didn't he? He did not. Hey, well, how do you know? You weren't even there. I was there an hour later. They were out after wild mountain sheep. Mr. Edwards slipped and fell to a ledge, and Paul risked his life trying to save him. Ain't that right, Adam? They were climbing up off that ledge when they fell to another ledge, and that's when the gun went off, getting him in the spine. Well, whose gun? Mr. Edwards' gun. All right, then why does he blame Pa? <sighs> Eat your supper, it's getting cold. Now, boys? Got it, Paul. Hi, I'm Pa. I'm sorry I opened the wine, Pa. I didn't know she was leaving so soon. Well, we haven't had any of this since Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it's a miracle. This wine, imprisoned in this bottle for 20 years. And each year it seems to grow better. Yep, well, I'm sorry Miss Edwards couldn't make it to dinner tonight, but I'm sure glad to be taking part of this wine. Uh, me too. Boys, I need your help. What do you think Tom Edwards could do? Uh, what do you mean, Pa? Well, they're out of money. He squandered everything they ever had. They owe everybody, and he's always gambling. That Zeke fellow is. Does he live with him? Hmm. Mm, I'm sorry, Paul. I wouldn't want you to talk with your mouth full. He not only lives with them, but they owe him, too. Well, what about Virginia City? Maybe uh, he could clerk somewhere. You ever talk with him? Every time he opens his mouth, it's like poison pouring out. Uh, Hoss, this was once a wonderful man, but he was struck down. Life struck him down. Paul, I didn't mean to offend you. They have a pretty good flow of water on their place, haven't they? And who are we to say that if we were struck down, we wouldn't be pouring out poison, too? Now, what were you saying about water? Oh, well, I was thinking that there's no mill around, and they have a pretty good stream there. We could uh, rig up a water wheel, build a small mill house. They could grind grain. That's a wonderful idea. A wonderful idea. Adam, I want to drink a toast to you. Hey, Paul, can we drink to him, too? He's a mighty bright feller. Downright bright and a real pride and joy to the Cartwrights. Well, thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Take care of my horse. Anything you say, Miss Edwards. Did you have a pleasant ride? Yes. I hope so. At least that will compensate a little for all that you have to put up with. Darling, I know it's dreadful of me to make such a fuss when you go out, but you've no idea how awful it is for me to sit here alone without you. Let me kiss you. Your skin is so lovely. Your cheeks are pink. <laughs> Kiss. I'm awfully tired. I, I think I'll go up to bed. You told me where you've been. I uh, went to see the Cartwrights. 
Why? To complain about your husband? Count, please don't start that again. I love you. I'll never leave you. You know that. I expect Ben received you very warmly, didn't he? Did you get any money out of him? Tom, please. He's very rich. You're very attractive. We need money. Yes, I did go about money. You know that property that my father left me in, in San Francisco? Well, Ben sometimes goes to San Francisco, and I thought that he might sell it for me. Darling, what about that property your father left you in San Francisco? What do you mean? Five acres? That should be worth quite a lot, wouldn't it, Ezekiel? Now, Mr. Edwards, you don't want to go gambling your wife's good land. Oh, no. I'm doing it for her. How's that, Mr. Edwards? Well, she hates you. This way she could get rid of you. Now, Ms. Edwards, you don't want to get rid of me close as I've been to your husband. How would that get rid of him? I'd bet the whole five acres against all we owe Ezekiel. If he loses, then we don't owe him anything, and he clears out. Go ahead. Bet the land. You surprise me, Mr. Edwards. You think I stay with you just for money? You think I take care of you? You think I carry you up them stairs night after night and put you to bed just for money? Now, believe you me, Mr. Edwards, I know I ain't fit to tie your shoe. But just living with you, sir, and Ms. Edwards here, well, I've grown to you two like it was home almost. No, son. No offense, man, but I can't take that bet. All right, all right. Play for five dollars. Will you lend me five dollars? You did give me a scare, Mr. Edwards. I thought I was going to lose my home. Good night, Miss Edwards. Uh, riding into town, I uh, gotta drop by. See me, see my wife. To see you both, Tom. Sit on the porch if you want to. She's picking grapes. Good morning, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah, that's a. Uh, it's a mighty fine stream you have here in the property. I hear my wife paid you a little visit yesterday. It was good to see her. Good to see you, Tom. Is it? Tom, I'll be straight out honest with you. I made a definite point of stopping by here this morning. I have a little business proposition I'd like to talk over with you. How would you like to make some good money? There ain't much Mr. Edwards can do ailing chronic the way he is. Tom, I want to build something on your property. A money-making operation. When I get my money out, plus 15%, then it's yours to own. <laughs> Did you hear that? My wife goes to see my best friend, and suddenly I'm in business. I'm rich. What's the proposition, Mr. Cartwright? A mill. A grain mill. Now, there's none around here for miles, and people around here need a mill. Now, you have the water. I have a son who knows how to put that water to work. What are you doing? Trying to get something from me? Tom, I said this is a business proposition. Now, I'll put up the money. And my sons and I will build that mill for you. What do you get, Mr. Cartwright? Water rights forever? You've already said what I want. My investment back plus 15%. If I have that, I'm satisfied. You mean... Hmm. That sounds pretty good. Not to me, it don't. Would you be good enough to let Mr. Edwards make his own deal if he so sees fit? Of course, sir. Excuse me. Excuse me. Never mind, Zeke, Ben. We've been thrown together so much, we're almost like partners. My only thought, sir, is for Mr. Edwards. That's enough, Zeke. Now, you keep out of this. Mr. Edwards, we'd have all those people coming around, all that excitement. He don't hardly sleep nights as it is. Tom, what do you say? 
Have we an agreement or haven't we? 15 percent, huh? 15. Now you shake on that, we'll have that mill up in a week. You make it 10 percent? No. 12 and a half? 12 and a half. Oh, I'm mighty glad, Tom. Why, that mill will be a great thing for everybody. <laughs> what do you think of that, Ezekiel? Wait till I tell Joyce. Well, uh, all right, Tom, I, uh, let's be getting on into town. Oh, say, uh, we can start bringing the stuff into mob, that's all right. Oh, do that. You do that, Ben. Ben. We'll be friends again. Let me tell you, Ben, in my heart, when I'm not in pain, I mean, in my heart, I never blame you. It was my gun, my fault. Bless you for coming. Goodbye tomorrow, Tom. Fine, Ben. Thought you owned me, didn't you? Thought I couldn't even get up to bed without you, huh? I'll show you. I'll take you to your wife, Mr. Edwards. Would you like to go pick grapes with your wife? I'll make me so much money, I'll hire me a nurse from San Francisco. It'd be a real one, too, not just somebody like you. Now, I wouldn't get excited, Mr. Edwards. You're going to have another bad night. You hope I have another bad night, isn't that it? You hope I'll have to call for you. Where are you taking me? To your wife, Mr. Edwards. I won't take you to your wife. You forget about my wife, you hear me? You get her right out of your head! Take me back in the house. Yes, sir. Ben! Joyce! Ben! Oh, how wonderful <laughs> to see you. Does, does Tom know you're here? Yes, I just talked to him. You just talked? I think I have some very good news for you. I suggested to Tom that we build a grist mill here and that he run it. What did he say? He's all for it. He likes the idea. Oh, Ben. Oh, I'm so happy. If only this could make Tom happy, too. Remember the way he used to be? I'll help you pick some grapes. Ben. What you're doing is the most wonderful thing anyone could do for us. Now, wait a minute. You're forgetting I'm making a profit, too. I know what you're doing. And then about... about yesterday, I've... I've never complained to you before, have I? I've never complained to anyone. But all these years, I've been dying, too. I know, Jess. Sometimes I think it would have been better for him if I'd left him. My health, my... Just the sight of me seems to infuriate him at times. Just the sheer sight of me. Just... Just your beauty. Oh, Ben. I forgot about that a long time ago. He's a cripple. And I'm a cripple, too. How are you a cripple? Because I don't stand up to him. Because I take every terrible thing he says to me. Sometimes he... he eyes me like a stranger would. He says things he shouldn't. This may all come to an end. You know, he was so happy when I left him. I think the mill may change everything. Oh, I hope so. It's got to be a fine mill. You know, Adam's very clever with that sort of thing. He's made some wonderful drawings. You're so fortunate in your boys. Yeah. Hmm. Three fine sons. They could be half your life. Only half. Sons can't be everything. Did you notice how blue the mountains were this morning? Yes, I... I saw them. Starting to look very good. Coming along fine, Pa. Hey, Pa, when's Hoss gonna get here with those millstones? She'll be real soon. Well, we'll be ready for him any time now. That's fine. Oh, thank you. Glad to see you pitching in. I wouldn't want to give you any wrong notions, Mr. Cartwright. I'm just doing this to please Mr. Edwards. I still don't think any good's gonna come of it. Well, why don't you give it a chance? 
Well, I'll give it a chance. I'm just wondering one thing. What's really in this for you, Mr. Cartwright? Hey, Pa. Pa, send me in some more nails, will you? Yeah, coming right up. But it looks so complicated. How did you ever figure it out? Well, it's really not original. It, the design is actually a combination. Some of it comes from the uh, old New England mills, and some comes from the wheels that the miners built here in Nevada. As you see, we've uh, built a flume leading to the top of the wheel. Now, at the proper time, we'll divert the water back through the flume. It'll pass over the top of the wheel, striking the blades, which will turn the wheel, which will dry the shaft, which will turn the upper <laughs> millstone, and presto, you're grinding wheat. It's really quite simple. Oh, Adam, I think you're absolutely marvelous. <laughs> well, actually, the idea is thousands of years old. But imagine what it meant to man before the steam age. Or should be here soon with the millstones. Uh, which reminds me, I'd better see how little Joe's coming along. Oh, and I'd better see about Tom. Hey, Professor. What? That's a mighty pretty assistant you got there. Meaning what? <laughs> well, you're a sly one. I was watching you standing close, bending over, sniffing her hair. I know you bright boys. How would you like to shut your filthy face, huh? <laughs> Well, I'm just doing you a favor, friend. Don't let her husband catch you. He's still handy with a rifle. Ezekiel! Come get me! Excuse me, Professor. I was so busy watching you and Mrs. Edwards, I forgot all about her husband. I don't know what you're up to, but don't make any trouble for Mrs. Edwards. <laughs> It's about time you got here, Professor. Did some of the heavy work. Don't call me that. What's the matter with you? Just don't call me Professor. Here, let me get that. I'm perfectly capable of doing this myself. Anything you say, ma'am. Wheel me down there. I want to see how things are going. Yes, sir. You think it'd be all right? All right? Why shouldn't it be all right? Come on. I just I mean the ground's so rough, your legs being so weak. Must you always remind him of that? I didn't mean no harm, ma'am. I was just thinking. Come on, come on. You know, Adam, I gotta hand it to you. I think this thing's gonna work. Thanks. I, uh, I'm sorry about blowing off all that steam a while ago. Yeah, well, that's all right. I'm used to taking all the guff around this family. That's what I'm here for. Oh, sure. You're really abused, aren't you? Here, put this plank up there. See what I mean? Got it? Yeah, why don't you get some light wood? Huh? Well, Ben, you're really making progress. <laughs> Moving right along, Tom. Any reason why I can't be of some help? Why, not at all. As a matter of fact, I think I've got the very thing for you. Ezekiel, move his chair in closer to the wheel. You see these binder rods? Yeah. They need tightening. Uh -huh. Now, here's a wrench. Get to work. Fine. <laughs> oh, Adam, isn't it wonderful to see Tom working again? It sure is. What's the matter? I just think you have the most wonderful father. Now be alarmed, folks. Just a signal. Signal for what? The arrival. Look to the east. Horse Cartwright, charioteer. Ah! Charging up with a ton of millstones. Come on, horse. Drive him. Fine, Paul. Have any trouble getting this load across the river? You know, a little bit. Be swimming with it. <laughs> hey, can I get this? Yeah, I got it. I got it. Well, I don't know about you, Mr. Edwards, but I always go by the rule you ought to lock the barn before the horse gets away. What are you talking about? Oh, just a certain party and your wife. You know what I think I'll do with you? When this mill is finished, I'll put a rope around your neck and hang you from one of the raptors just to celebrate. Mr. Edwards, you know I'm just protecting your interest. Listen, you filthy snake. I trust my wife, and I trust Ben Cartwright. He's my friend. And if you ever again put one of your rotten, suspicious thoughts in my mind, so help me heaven, I'll kill you. Your friend, Mr. Edwards? I wasn't talking about him. I was talking about his son, Adam. Watch your hands down there with that pole. All right. 
Let me get this over there. It's heat. Easy now. Easy. Easy. Okay, let her slide down. Easy does it. Watch your hands, Pop. Now, let her slip. I ain't, I ain't saying she did anything, but the point is... Look, it... just tell me if you saw anything or you didn't between her and Adam. M Mr. Edwards, I don't want you getting excited. Never mind about that. Just tell me what you saw. Well, Adam was... Well, he was kind of brushing up against her here and there. Did he touch her? No, not exactly. It's... Well, it's his eyes, you know, when she wasn't looking at him. His eyes was... Well, you know what I mean. It... It just kind of touching her all over. Of course, you've got to admit that Adam is a good-looking boy. You know, with a little bit of luck, we'll have this mill running by tonight. Tom! Tom, they think they'll have the wheel going by tonight. Isn't that wonderful? Do you know what I think we should have? A party. And let's dance and let's grind the first grain and have the neighbors in. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful to have music again? I bet you'd like to dance, wouldn't you? Just to hear the music would be enough. I bet you'd like to dance with Adam. I beg your pardon? What's all this between you and Adam? Between me and Adam? Ever since the mill started, you've been tagging each other around. Tom, I don't understand you. You understand me. You're a woman, aren't you? You're young, you're lovely. Don't tell me you don't know what I'm talking about. Tom, on my word of honor, no such thought for Adam ever entered my mind. Then why are you so happy? Why have you been smiling ever since this mill started? Because of you. Because I thought it would start your life again, and my life. You haven't been tagging Adam around? No. Brushing against him, leaning against him. No. Laughing with him at me? No. You have, both of you! You've been tagging each other around like a couple of simpering lovebirds. What's going on? I don't know. Looks like Ezekiel has done his work. Ezekiel, get me out of here! Excuse me, Miss Edwards. <laughs> you got him so upset, I better take him inside and lay him down for a while. Ezekiel, do I have you to thank for this? No, ma'am. I didn't tattle on you, if that's what you mean. If you come near my wife again, Adam Cartwright, I'll kill you both! Oh, I'll give you my word. It's Ezekiel. He's warped and twisted Edward's mind. Pa, maybe we better stop working on the mill. Well, after I lug these, these stones in here? We'll finish this mill. If our man is mixed up as that's liable to kill somebody. Keep working. So humiliated, so ashamed. I don't know what to do. <laughs> All right, now, take it easy, Joe. You'll ruin the whole thing. Look, I told you it wouldn't fit, Adam. You made the shaft too short. Well, oh, come on, I'll lift. Now, I'll lift, horse. Dang it, Adam, if I lift anymore, I'm going to lift the whole earth up. Lift! Oh, come on, we, Adam? Call it quits. Quit? Yeah, quits. We did enough work today for ten men. Now, come on, Joe. Give me a few more minutes. I'm hungry, Al. And I'm you give me one reason why I ought to break my back. Because I want to see it work. I want to see this mill grind wheat. I want to eat bread from this mill that we built. You do? I do. He does? He does. Well, why don't you say so, brother? Come on, let's get to work. All right, all together now. All right, let's go. One, two, heave. All right, in she goes. Hey, hey get hey, the other hey. side over there. Hey, wait till I get this board up. Let's go. One, two, heave. Heave. Hey, hey. hey way to go, brother. Hey, look, it won't. Watch, get up to the diversion gate. When I give you the signal, let the water in the flume. Right. Hey, Adam, don't you think we ought to wait for Pa? Pa well, said to get it done, and that's what we're going to do. Now, get up there and let up that sluice gate when I tell you. Aye, aye, sir.
Let it go. What do you want? There's one thing I don't want is people shooting at me without a reason. I got a reason, best reason in the world, my wife. Where is she? That's right, where is she? Mr. Edward here has been worried about her. It ain't good for him to worry. How should I know where his wife is? You ought to know where she is. She's with your father, ain't she? He ran off after her. Didn't think I knew, did you? I know. Ezekiel told me. I know all about your father, too, from a long way back. It's not the first time he betrayed me. He shot me in the spine. My father didn't shoot you, and you know it. I don't know any such thing. I know it was you Cartwrights caused all my trouble. Mr. Edwards, you're wrong. Real wrong. But I didn't come here to argue with you. I just come to tell you that your mill is finished. We got it going. You think the mill solves everything, don't you? You know what I'm going to do with your mill? I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to burn it to the ground. It's Ben Carter. I think he can buy my wife with a mill. You mark my words. Before I let him steal my wife, I'll kill him and hurt you! Ezekiel, if you're really his friend, you'll get these wild ideas out of his head. I am his friend, Mr. Cartwright. But what's right is right. Man has a simple duty to protect his home. Ben, I'll always remember this time we've had together today. It was as though we had escaped to another world. It's been that way for me, too. Ben, look! The wheel is turning! Oh, oh isn't it beautiful? It certainly is. Joyce, I just can't let you go back. Ben, please, I... At least spend the night with us at the Ponderosa. Don't go back to that house, not right now. I'm not afraid. Tom and Ezekiel will be so drunk they won't even hear me come in. Besides, with the mill and all, perhaps it will be different again. I've got to give him that chance. Well, just to be sure everything's all right, I'll, I'll ride by first thing in the morning. Ben, thank you for everything. Pa, we've been waiting for you. Oh? Why? I was a little worried about you. <laughs> it's mighty thoughtful of you, Adam, but I have a feeling I'm old enough to take care of myself. I uh, ran into some trouble over at the Edwards place. What sort of trouble? Tom took a shot at me. No, I can't believe that. Neither could I. I went up to the ranch to tell him that we'd finish with the mill, and he and that hired hand of his were glassy-eyed drunk. Well, what started it? What brought it on? I don't know. Tom had some wild idea about you and Joyce being off someplace together, and he was making threats about killing you if you didn't stay away from her. Where are you going? Going right back to that house as fast as I can make it. That man touches Joyce. Huh? What? You want me to go with you? No. You stay here. I'll handle this alone. Pa, oh. Tom's suspicion about you and Joyce, it isn't true, is it? Suppose it were, Adam. How would you feel about it? I'd say that if there ever was a chance, she couldn't do any better. 
I'd be happy for both of you. Thank you for that, Adam. That does it, Mr. Edwards. It's my house now. Your house. Your money. Your strength that packs me upstairs and puts me to bed. And she's my wife, Ezekiel. You hear that? She's my wife. That's right. Your wife. You owe me quite a bit, Mr. Edwards. I've got a meal. We'll grind flour. I don't make money. Ain't you forgetting something? I won that mill. I'll pay you some way. I'll pay you. Now that you mention it, there is a way. An easy way. You like to gamble, don't you? What are you driving at? I just want to make one more bet with you. Just one cut of the cards. If I lose, you don't owe me anything, Mr. Edwards. Not a thing. You get the house back and all the money you owe me. If I lose, what do I still own you don't already have? Well, just one cut of the cards can prevent that, Mr. Edwards. A gambler like you ought to jump at the chance. Somebody ought to kill you. Somebody ought to stop you. <laughs> well, maybe somebody will. But that ain't gonna be you, is it, Mr. Edwards? Looks like my king beats your nine. <laughs> Ezekiel, would you mind bringing Mr. Edwards up to our room now? I don't have to do that no more, Miss Edwards. That's my room now. That's where I'm going to sleep. Even drunk as you are, you know that's not true. Isn't it? Hey, you ask your husband. What does he mean? Ms. Edwards, there's some things going on here I think you ought to know about. Tom, what is he saying? He won the bet. What bet? What do you mean? Oh, you're just as drunk as he is. You don't even know what you're saying. No, he's right, Ms. Edwards. I won the bet. Tom, tell him to get away from me. Help me! I can't help you, Joyce. I can't help you. You might as well get used to the idea, Miss Edwards. From now on, there ain't gonna be nobody Just but... Get away from me! You touch me and I'll kill you! I don't know how I'll do it, but I'll kill you! <laughs> <laughs> Where well, she'll get over that as soon as she calms down a bit. Will she, Ezekiel? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Why shouldn't I be? You heard her. She said she'd kill you first. Maybe someone's gonna stop you after all. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Cartwright. You should knock before you come into my home. Get out of here. No, Mr. Cartwright. Everything here belongs to me now. You see, I've taken Mr. Edwards' place. Even this chair belongs to me. Joyce. Well, now stay right where you are, Mr. Cartwright. I wouldn't want to have to hurt you. Now, you 
Lay your pistol belt on that table. Why are you sitting in that wheelchair? You're not crippled. That's right, I'm not. I just want to get the feel of it. I want to know how Mr. Edwards felt when he sat in it. I want to know how Mr. Edwards felt about everything. Come on, Joyce. Let's get out of here. No. Now, now you can't, Mr. Cartwright. She belongs to me, too. Don't you understand? Look, look I, I have it all here. I kept track of every bet I made with Mr. Edwards. He gambled away everything. And tonight, he gambled away his wife. Well, if you won everything from him, why did you kill him? <laughs> well, he tried to go back on a bet. You, you know a man can't do that. Ezekiel. You see, you're very tired. Why don't you rest and we can talk about it? Go on, Joyce. No, no. No, where's she going? Just outside. No, no, she can't. Now, Mr. Edwards told you that if you tried to steal his wife, he'd kill you. I'm the same as Mr. Edwards now, so if you try to take her, I'm going to have to kill you. Joyce, this is, uh, this is what you want to do. I've had a lot of time to think this past week, and, uh, well, I have friends in Denver. I'd stay with them, and then I'll move on east. All right. You, you go, and after a few weeks or, or months, well, then you can decide what you want to do. Now, whatever you do, don't sell the mill. You use it. Joyce, when you come back... Ben, I love you. But I could never come back. I need you. Remember you told me once that when little Joe's mother died, you had to get away, had to meet new people? Well, think of it that way. Drive into Virginia City. I'd rather we say goodbye here. It isn't easy for me either. <laughs> <laughs> 